Hi guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through all the ruck options for 2023 as there's been quite a, I guess a, a conundrum with injuries as well as players that are getting less time in the ruck especially with some ruck movement in terms of Luke Jackson, uh, Roy Lobb and Brody Gundy moving sides so we'll see how that impacts the A4 Fantasy ruck department. Uh, remember to like and subscribe as uh, I hope this channel will grow and I'll be able to put out more content that you guys want to see as I'll be coming up in the future with the defenders, midfielders, forwards and rucks uh, mid-price uh, edition and then we'll move on to uh, rookies and that should basically get us to the start of the season and we'll see if there's any other uh, enough time for some more AFL fantasy content and so let's go over to the this over here. So again, I've done my usual of um, of just I'll have Ruckman uh, the position set to Ruck, and I'll go through all the sides. Um, Adelaide first up, and Riley O'Brien is the main Ruck, but we also have to look out for Strachan as. Um, I believe he could take over the duties in 2023 as they look to potentially phase Riley O'Brien out. But that's just a thought and just something to look out for. If we look, if we sort it by, it's probably better if we sort it by averages. See, Riley O'Brien, 93.3. I think he was one of the best rucks last year. And um, Elliot Himmelberg will also pinch hit in the ruck at times, but he doesn't get ruck status and doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things for these two um as he was only at 11 percent and so yeah this will be one that we have to watch over the season to see if it does actually change but um even if it doesn't i don't think our uh riley has too much of a better ceiling than this if we look here at his uh 2022 we'll see 93 2021 86 86 in the shortened quarters, 95. So he could do well, but I just don't think he will. I think his, um, I think he just, there's better rucks out there and he's very inconsistent, whereas I want to set and forget ruck uh, this year. So now we move on to Brisbane Lions who have the four, the four rucks, even though they'll be the main two. Uh, it's pretty set on McInerney taking that R1 spot there, and Darcy Fort will be the forward that, and I assume it'll be probably a 70-30 split in uh, CBAs, as McInerney was 69% last year, and Darcy Fort 37%. Um, Smith and Lane are not really going to impact anything in terms of fancy-wise, as they are both rookies and it really would take an injury to McInerney or Fort for them to get game time uh, so look out for that in case there is an injury and that could be a rookie downgrade um, allowing to free up more cash but other than that I don't think there's much more to say about these two uh, on to Carlton next and they are an interesting one because when Pianet starts it's roughly a 75-25 split um, with him being favoured over De Conan. Um, however, I expect that to decrease and De Conan to take up more time in terms of CBA is just due to him looking better when the season went on. Uh, this could see potentially them dropping Pianet, uh, Pitonet, uh in general and just going with De Conan and someone else uh, to pinch hit in the rucks. As we've seen uh, with Crips taking some rucks, especially in the forward line and stuff like that, as well as other um, key forwards uh, that could take up some time. And you also have to look at the likes of Jack Silvani playing that uh, secondary ruck as a full forward slash uh, ruckman. And that could be a 75-25 split with De Conan that could see... De Conan's the one that I could see being the big riser this year. As How old is he? He's... 23 he could easily if we look at his stats here 20 to 23 so 60 then he averaged 41 so he's been averaging basically 60 across his whole career i think this could be a big step up year for him i just think that there's i don't want to risk it in the ruck department when again i've said time and time again i want to set and forget ruck after not after 
wanting to go for Meek, but after seeing his uh, uh, role, I don't think he's an option. And now I just want set and forget rucks to be able to trade around in other places. Um, now we go on to Collingwood there next. And the big question is, uh, do you give the nod to Darcy Cameron? And if we look at the CBAs from last year, it looks like it's going to be a pretty even spread between him and Cox. Um, even so, that probably alludes to Darcy Cameron not needing the CBAs that um, other people, other rucks like Jared Witts probably need. But also you need to look at... Um, he might also see a decrease in his uh, ruck time this year as Cox could be the R1, indicating probably a 60-40 split in favour of Cox, whereas last year it was probably 55-45 in terms of Cameron. So if he gets 10-15% less time in the ruck, you could see him averaging 10 or 15 less. Um, and the problem I have here is that with when he was, he did have a couple of bad games and you just cannot have that. He had a round 19 against Essendon. He had a 34 if I go to here. And we see match stats. Like, he had this 34 here. He also didn't have good time in Ruck in, I believe, one of these games as well. And I just cannot have a guy... Uh, other than this period here where he was averaging basically 100 through that period, he hasn't had a good season. Um, well, he's injured probably here. Uh, 71's not really good enough for his price. 5140, you know, all of these ones where he isn't really playing as a ruckman because Grundy was around at this point, but he wasn't really playing as a ruckman. Then you see here, and if we go to that 34, he had 10 hitouts here, only 19 in this game. So you just got to worry that um, it looks from the um, from what's coming out from the Collingwood coaching staff that Cox will take over that. Uh, number one ruck pretty much in my opinion taking Darcy Cameron out of any um, fancy role or classic uh, position um, in any teams and you'll probably see his ownership plummet um, Essendon's next and really I don't want to be as I've said time and time again I don't want to take a risk on Ruckman and Draper would be a huge risk as he's averaged pretty much 60 throughout or lower throughout his whole career and I just don't see him averaging what what would we need probably eighty five at that at his price range for him to be any good. He's not gonna do that, or it's very unlikely that he'll do that. And that pretty much puts him out of the running. Um, he will have a good ruck split with uh, with Phillips, but it's just he just doesn't score well enough. He's one of the ruck with that you really look at in terms of when your ruckmen are playing against them to sort of dominate him and get good scores. So, yeah, that's not really too much to say about that. Next up is Sean Darcy and Luke Jackson at Frio. Um, with the introduction of Jackson, it probably means Darcy's um, CBA percentage goes down 5 or 10%, which doesn't help at all, considering he averaged 86 last year, and he's a very inconsistent ruckman. So if you take away five points from that, averaging 80 at 760k, that's just a no-go for me. And I think that's one of the reasons why he's got such a low ownership. I think it will be a 70-30 flip, uh, split in Darcy's favour, but considering he's a hit-out ruckman and he doesn't really get much more in terms of uh, like disposals, I don't see him doing too well. And Jackson's not really an, really an option considering he'll be a forward and he won't be in the ruck terribly much. He'll have a similar role as what he did at um, at Melbourne and I think he'll probably get... He might average 75, but like that's not enough at his price range. Next up is Geelong and basically you can take out... You should not be selecting any of these guys for your team this year as... Um, as too many rucks basically here for them and they're just not fancy friendly maybe you could use Radigalia as a forward option or maybe but he's too expensive to really be on the bench and I don't see him scoring too well that year this year but he could do well um and yeah it seems like it's an 80 20 split with Blickarves and he's not really scoring 
he's not really going to increase in his scoring or not, so there's not really much use in having him, even though he's got this weird uh, uh, dual position of midfield ruck. So I just don't think... I think he'll be more run in the midfield this year, and you'll see um, Stanley's... Well, Stanley does have the uh, better split, so I don't see much changing in terms of averages here. And yeah, there's just not much option there. There's more options in singular rucks or even R2s. And then you come on to Gold Coast, and this is... I'm surprised more people aren't jumping on him. He's only at 6.8% owned. He's had a full preseason as today, and he has the easiest ruck matchup of the season going into round one, with it being, um, at worst for Wits, it will be uh, Laddams, but most likely it's looking like it'll be McAndrews, meaning that uh, he basically is, if he doesn't get injured, I see him getting 130 or so against him. Like, he'll get 60 or so hitouts or so against McAndrews. And you'll see, it'll be similar. What did he do against? Bulldogs, he had 55 hitouts. Um, Brisbane Lions, 50. Where did he play this? Did he play the Swans? 37 hitouts against the Swans. Um, that was probably against Laddams, maybe. Even against Laddams, he got 99. So, I just don't see him... I see him doing really well this year, and I think... He could quite easily increase his average by 10 or 15 and get up to that 105 or so. I think he's one of the better... Did I just... I think he's one of the better choices out of all of them. And so I think he's the one that you need to go for as he has a really good uh, round one matchup. Uh, let me get this back. And so, yeah, he is the reason. And Ned Royal's just there in case... Uh, which gets injured and he'll be the, I guess, the only ruck at Gold Coast, even though I think they'll just split it up with other players going in there. But I think he's um, a good rookie downgrade if he does get a game, but I don't think he'll get a game at the moment because Wits will be that uh, number one ruck as he gets about 85% or so. Um, and you have, like, Chole or King that can back up as the forward ruck as well. Um and yeah, and now we go on to GWS, and basically here there's three rucks and two positions to fill, and I just can't go with Proust just because, what did he play in the end? Ten games, and if you look, uh, where is it here? I'll go on to his player profile here, 2022, missed the first two games, missed a game in here, missed games here. The, he just didn't play, basically, enough. And he was suspended, injured, basically everything. So I just don't think there's there's too much risk in playing him, basically. And, um, yeah, I don't think there's, uh, there's much more. He's not going to go up. He averaged 85. He's priced at 85. He's not going to go up to 100, I don't think, meaning you can basically knock him out for value anyway. Flynn's just a 70 or so average guy, and Briggs is av going to average probably 50 or so if he even gets a game. So there's just not any value in there. Madden's there highlighted just because in case there's a game where he's able to play, if some of these guys get injured, then he'll be good at 200k, but other than that, there's not much value at GWS. Hawthorne's pretty much the same. I don't know why I even have Meek highlighted at this point. He's going to be the forward and Ruck, uh, Ruck 2 with a 60-40 split, I reckon, with Reeves being the Ruck 1. And considering Reeves had pretty much that role last year, he's going to average 60 again. He won't do much special. Lynch probably won't get much of a game, if any. And Meek, there might be a little bit of value there, but it's not going to be much now that he's going to be the R2, which is kind of frustrating because if he was the number one Ruck, he there's probably 30 or so points upside, but now that he's a forward ruck there's probably only about 10 or 15 so that's that and I don't think Ramsden won't play I don't think very unlikely and yeah there's not much upside with them again sort of alluding to who I'm going to pick these two um, I don't know why I have them highlighted anymore as there's the only real reason you'd select them is if there was an injury concern to 
uh, one of the two that was major, like there was initially in the preseason with Gorn potentially being out, but I just see these two. Grundy probably holds his average maybe less, and I think Gorn drops 10 or so points as he'll be the, as Grundy will be the number one forward, probably in a 60-40 split. And so there's no real value at all with these guys, and it's more about how much valuable the two premium rucks give to the Melbourne midfield as they get better service, so that's why I have Petrarca in my team. Um, now on to North, as we rattle through these. Again, another older Ruckman and two younger, I guess, guys. And I see Goldstein probably getting phased out this year and more moving towards Jerry as the number one Ruck and Coleman as the number two. And, I mean, it's not very fantasy-friendly as these guys average... 60 odds and they've all no one's got a injury discount so there's no real value in that this year and yeah no value in either classics or draft for anyone from north melbourne in terms of ruckman moving on to port now the problem i have here is that i think scotty lysett's been hyped up too much for the value that he'll bring his highest ever score or average was 2021 which was 85.6 and that's what his what his price is based off he has a 18 percent discount on that 85 which brings it i don't even know down to what like a um probably like a 70 or so average i think so if you look at that he's not going to be much of value and you're basically saying that you're gonna he's going to improve, he has probably about 15, 10 to 15 points max upside in him and he's also a walking injury concern so I don't know why people are trying to even select him, maybe it's just a point of difference and just hoping that he fires but 15 or so points of upside for him when you can be getting a midfielder such as Dom Sheed who could potentially have 20-25 points of upside and going with a premium there, I think is just it's just not probably the best point, uh, like best selection. And yeah, I don't think, I don't think I'll ever have him selected in my team this year. Uh, Richmond again. You have Nankervis, who's at max probably a nineties guy, low nineties, and he'll be the number one ruck this year with a sixty five thirty five split. So there's no real value in him again. That's why he's got such a low ownership as you pay up another 40 odd k and you can get wits who will average who pro- probably averages 10 or 15 more than Nankervis this year so there's just more value in him soldo might get a couple of games but he's only two years younger than Nankervis, so it's not like they're gonna blood him in as a a younger ruck or whatever and then you got the two youngsters in samson ryan and colina well they're not really youngsters they're 22 and 23 but they won't get much of a game and so that's why it's a no for me really in terms of those guys from Richmond now we move on to St Kilda and the only real question is how will uh will Campbell get a game basically because if you look here I have it set up here so let me just check yes it's gone over um, if we look here at the 2022 splits for Ruck, you will see, I probably should uh, increase this, here we go, in this last game when Tom Campbell had a 52 and um, Marshall had a 48, if we look back here at this and look at Raul Marshall, I believe he dropped a, was it a 50 or something in that game? He dropped a score of 47 when he played, when Campbell played with him. Um, if I look at any other games that Campbell played, he didn't play any other games with uh, Rowan Marshall there. Marshall had a 27 from rounds 8 to 11. Let's look at Marshall's scores. 8 to 11. No 100 scores as he didn't have. Uh, and let's look at 13 and 14. Let's see what he did there. Low 50s. Uh, is it the no. 40s again so less and then 16 and 17 and we'll see probably here 16 and 17 he somehow got that um, those tons 
But if we look at any scores, uh, where's his high percentage games? Round 15 against the Swans, 131 when he had um, 85%. And then round 19 to 22, if we look at that, round 19 to 22, averaged, what is that, probably 115, 120 in the end when he had 85% uh, CBA. So if we get that out of him, he will easily be the number one ruck in the comp. He could easily average, what did he average last year, 91? I could see him, if Campbell doesn't play, he could average 105, 110 here quite easily. But if Campbell does play, he's going to average 91 again because Campbell will play half the games and just ruin his average. So we just got to hope that uh, Campbell doesn't play, fingers crossed. And yeah, that's pretty much it for St Kilda as Kessler and Heath, I think even Heath's already injured. So that doesn't help with Saints. So maybe Kessler might get a game, hopefully over Campbell, so because he can actually probably play up forward. Now we move on to the Sydney Swans and Hickey's out for potentially off the year and Laddams is unlikely to play round one, meaning McAndrews could line up round one. And uh, he could be that good guy just to, again, get some cash flow in. At, wouldn't be necessarily a cash cow as... Uh, if we look at his uh, VFL stats, um, we'll see here. He doesn't really score that well um, at any way. So it is going to be a problem. I mean, he is a raw ruck guy. So, and I think he will. I think don't think he was playing majority ruck in a lot of these games. If we look at this game, um, where is it? Match stats here. You'll see. Um, where is it? They had. I believe they were having. Look at the hitouts here. They had Callum Sinclair as the number one ruck. So he's playing that as a secondary ruck. If we go back here. As a secondary ruck, he averaged... What's that? Around 30 or so. So maybe he averages 40, 45. And that'll get you some cash generation. And I think you might as well start with a green, another green guy. And just see. Maybe someone on the... Maybe another guy you can have as that um, maybe your uh, utility guy you can have as that red arrow or that red dot I guess and so yeah I think he just you might as well jump on him as well because he's a 200k ruck guy and even if he just plays one game he'll have gained some value and then he'll be a red dot when um, Laddams comes back and you can trade him out whenever another uh, ruckman comes into the play um yeah, so even if he just goes up to 300k or so, because I don't know what... We'll have to look at when the actual stats come out for the fancy matches that... Uh, preseason games that come up, but I think he will average 50, 55 or so, just as a number one ruck. He can't do much worse than that, like... So we'll see with him. Uh, now moving on to the last couple, we have the West Coast Eagles who are, um, Natanui's coming back, but he's just an injury-prone player, so I don't think you can select him, and it looks like there'll be a battle between Williams and Jameson for the, uh, ruck split, and I think it will go in terms of, uh, Jameson's way, just looking at the splits from last year, if we look at West Coast Eagles, you'll see when, where is it, get rid of that... Um, if we look here, Jameson, 60 percentage. And then you look at Bailey Williams when he did play and Nananui didn't play in this run. Here you'll see when they played together, 40 is pretty even. So maybe it's even just a 50-50 split with those two. Uh, we don't need Ron Marshall anymore. So that, but anyway, it doesn't hold much value, those two. Not good enough for fancy-wise. And then I'll move on to the last guys in Tim English. Basically, he's going to be the number one ruck. If we look at centre bounce attendance, I know this isn't the best one because they uh, there's also around the ground type stuff. But if we look here, the only times he didn't play 
the only times he didn't get good uh, attendance was this 65 here, basically. Uh, other than that, his lowest is 78. So he's going to get the percentages. It's just whether, is he going to actually be able to be fit enough to play? I don't think, think Sweet has any influence on the his um, centre bounce attendance as I don't even know if they'll play Sweet with English. They only did it what once, twice... They only did it twice in the year, and both times it was a 78-22 split. So, I think English, the only problem I have with English is that you can save 100k to go down to Wits, who will average probably the same as English, I think, this year. I know, big call, but um, <clears throat> that 100k can get you from uh, almost the likes of a, like a Dom Sheet or someone else to that likes of a Golden or someone around that range there. So I think that's better value than going to the likes of English and hoping that he does score 10, 15 points better than Wits, as I think their gap will be a lot closer. And I think English is the one that I'm willing to bet against um, compared to Marshall in the ruck category. So if I go back to here and go back to here, that's my April Fantasy uh, Rucks review. I know, a long video this time. But with all the, I guess, um, all the injuries and roles changes with a lot of changes in the Ruck this year in terms of team trades, I, I think I needed to come out with a video pretty uh, quickly to just say my thoughts and opinions and why I have... Marshall, Witz and McAndrew in my ruck line this year to start at the moment before the official preseason games and we'll see from there. So remember to like and subscribe and if you want to see all my other fancy team previews it'll be up in this corner over here and all my other AFL fancy content will be just below that in another playlist and if you want to go over and uh, see what So Rare is about I think I'll leave the playlist up there. And yeah, I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye guys.